So welcome back. In our uh, lecture here, what we're going to cover is how we can take what we learned here with functions and do the same thing uh, with some of these other features that we have. One we know we want is buy a store, right? And if we just leave that blank like this and did another one, um, we also want to have one for uh, next day. So when we increment the day. So we're creating these functions. Notice that we're getting this error here. And that's because we don't have any statements here at all. So uh, a, a command um, or a statement that's uh, used in uh, Python, when you just don't want to do anything, is pass. And basically pass just means go to the next line. It kind of creates, uh, in this case, uh, what you might call a stub uh, function where you could call this f function. I can call this, for example, and we won't get any errors because the method is defined. Now, I mentioned to you before that you know you could get errors if you don't indent right. Let's see what that looks like. So, if you happen to get this here and run, notice that you get this indentation error, unexpected indent. Most likely, there has never been a Python programmer alive that has uh, not seen this error. So you're going to see this error frequently, especially when it's kind of new to you. Python um, is very picky about formatting. You have to indent like that. And you have to have statements in your methods and functions or it will error as well. So let's see this buy store method. Now we know that when we buy a store, we want to increment our store count and our money and take away from our money. So if we come in here, we don't need our pass anymore, and uh, we could then make and call buy store and we'll just let's we'll sync let's we'll simplify things now so because it's too confusing having all this stuff so we're just going to get rid of these things I'll, I'll not get rid of the daily profit we can easily know what we have to do to increment the day but we'll keep the daily profit because we're going to use that in a little bit but we, we're going to buy the store and so it's going to run this code here and then we're going to take away our money then we're going to display the store info and we can go ahead and just get rid of this because we've already written our buy store. So what we can also do is just comment this out because we don't even need it now. We're not working on this. We're just saving it because we don't have to rethink out our, our uh, function here, even though it's very simple. So I run here, and notice it says local variable store count uh, can't be referenced before assignment. So what this is telling us is that store count belongs to the, this variable belongs out here to this, what is called a scope. So out here, it knows what store count is. But when you try to change store count inside of here, it complains because this function right here does not know about store count. So one of the ways that we can change that in our buy store could uh, effectively manage this variable and, and present it and, and increment it is to pass it along as a parameter. So I can say store count and it's going to pass store count to here. It's going to increment it. and we do, I'm showing you this so that you can understand scoping completely. Um, and then what that would mean is we need to pass along the store count here. So we can say store count. And just for so you can completely understand this, I'm going to print store count out here. So what's happening is when, when this runs, and I'll just get rid of this for now. When buy store runs, we're passing along our store count variable here 
into this function. So this is what's known as, as a parameter. This is really the parameter, and then uh, this is, is an attribute um, that comes in, an argument. I guess is also is what it would be called. So this would be in the argument, and you can have multiple ones. For example, we can send along money as well. So let's do that, and we'll send along money. Now these don't have to be the same, name the same. We'll leave them that way for now. But um, let's run this and see what happens. Now. When we pass store count in, and let's actually do this. Let's change store count here to one. So our we've already start with one store. So that'll make it a little clearer what's going on. So when we pass a one to here, it's going to come up and pass along a one to here. Then store count's going to increment it, and we're going to print out a two. Then we're going to you know change the money here, but when it falls out and display store info what you're going to notice and you'll see it down here if you're looking ahead is that store count is going to go back to zero so watch this it actually will go back to one because we're starting with one now so we started out with one we came into here and with this money uh, I'm sorry the store count getting passed along it passed along the one and it incremented it to two and printed it out printed out the two here so we got our two just like we expect but then when we run display store info we didn't get money updated so what this tells you is we passed the variable along but the variable does not get updated inside of this once it falls out it um, reverts to using the, the variable that we've defined here. So one way to think of this, and this is really what's happening, is that this is a copy. When you send money to here, it's a copy. And you can name this anything. So you could name this money in this store count. And it doesn't it, and it just so we're clear, um, we could do it like this even. So these don't have to be the same. The, the parameters do not have to match. The the arguments here. So you can name this whatever you want. So it makes the most sense and it's most legible inside of this function. And of course the same with this one. So when we run it again, there's not going to be any errors, but it might not be what you expected. Um, the store count, um, you would expect it uh, to stay two possibly. But as we can see, it's not updating it. So now the question you might ask is, well, how could we update that? Now, one way is we can return back our store count variable that we've updated so we can use a, a, a statement here called return and we can say store count var and so we increment it we pass it in we increment it here and then here we're gonna return it back to our main application and then I just have to come back into here and say store count equals so once we've incremented the store, we pass along the store count variable and we've incremented it, then right here, then we return it back here, we're updating our store count. And now when we run, notice how our store count now matches what we would expect. And we could take this and anytime we want to buy a store, we can copy and paste this. We'll just copy and paste them both. like that the store count is going up but uh, notice our money is not going down like it should so we're gonna next see how we can also uh, modify that money variable as well in our next lecture